Good evening, this is Dr. Chaitanya Hoka again in my channel Critical Care Basics and in this we are at present going through ECG tutorials and this is the 28th ECG tutorial. In last two tutorials we have seen the mechanisms of arrhythmias namely automaticity, enhanced automaticity and triggered arrhythmias, triggered activity. In this last uh, lecture on the mechanisms of arrhythmias, we are going to discuss about re entry. So, let us come. Re entry requires few basic things to happen. One of the things is there should be a tissue which should be unresponsive to any action potential. For example, this is not conducting the action potential. So, either this could be some anatomical problem like a scar or it could be functional problem due to difference in electrophysiological properties of cells, whatever. So, one of the prerequisites is this, there should be tissue which blocks the pathway of current. Then, there should be two different pathways, pathway A and pathway B with different electrophysiological properties with one pathway which is able to send current or transmit current fast and the second pathway which is slow and <clears throat> this another requisite for example if this happens no problem this is a slow pathway slow pathway has a faster recovery time because there is a lot of time for recovery and the fast pathway has a slow recovery time so, if even if this requ these requisites have been met, if the current comes normally, it will go through the fast pathway, go ahead, at the same time, it will come back retrogradely. By the time it is coming here, the current from the slow pathway will reach and both will cancel each other. For example, this is a current. This is a tissue which is unresponsive, right? And this is the slow pathway and this is the fast pathway. If the current comes in its normal time, it travels through the fast pathway and it goes ahead. At the same time, it goes retrogradely. Meanwhile, the current which has passed from the slow pathway reaches and both enterprise each other and stop. So, even if there is one more prerequisite which is required that is some premature ectopic stimulus or premature beat. So, if the pre beat come premature ahead of time, in that case, because the fast, fast pathway has a slow recovery time, this fast pathway is refractory. So, the current has no option but to go through the slow pathway only. And when it comes to the slow pathway, it goes ahead from this point. But here, by the time this current comes here, the fast pathway is no more refractory. It is repolarized. And the current passes fast through the fast pathway. And again, by the time it, the current reaches here, this has recovered normally. So again, this current goes in a circus moment, causing what is called as re entry. Right? But you will notice here, that when the current reaches here, the current that was that had gone earlier has a tail and this new current has a head. So there is a gap in between these two. This is called as the excitable gap. And this is where if you block here or put an extra current, you can stop this here. So this is one of the mechanisms that is used to stop the entry arrhythmias by the electrophysiology. So, re entry arrhythmias could be inducible by programmed electrical stimulation. As you can see, if there are two tissues with different electrophysiological properties and you properly program a current with induced by an electrical stimulus, which kind of comes in the premature part when the fast uh, pathway is refractory, you can generate or stimulate re entry arrhythmias. They have an abrupt concept and abrupt offset. Usually the hour intervals are regular because they are going to circle and they can, they can be reset and entrained by pacing. 
Suppose that arrhythmia is going at a rate of say 150 per minute, pre and pre -tempo. So you can put a pacemaker lead and give electrical impulses at a rate of say 200 per minute. So in that case, this re-entry uh, re will stop and the pace, pace rhythm will take over. This is called as entrainment. So you can reset by impulse exactly at the excitatory gap or you can entrain it by fast pacing. So there could be many examples of re-entry like at AV node re-entry tachycardia or um, atrioventricular re-entry tachycardia due to orthodromic and antidromic. We will discuss more about it when we discuss about AVRT. Atrial flutter uh, is usually a macro re-entry, atrial fibrillation is usually a micro re-entry and ventricular tachycardia. So anatomical re-entry or functional re-entry. For example, anatomical reentry could be due to anatomical reentry means there is some problem, anatomical problem there. For example, there is a scar or there is an additional pathway, which can, for example, in WPW syndrome, AV nodal reentry, some flutter, some ventricular tachycardia, VF. There could be an anatomical scar or an ischemic tissue, or there could be only tissue abnormality, contiguous fibers that exhibit different electrophysical properties. This is called as functional. Types of re-entry could be macro re-entry when the circuit large enough to be mapped. So it is usually large enough to it means that at least more than 2 mm in size. For example, in active flutter and EVRT, and micro entry when the circuit is too small to be mapped by electrophysical studies, for example, AF and interactive tachycardia. And there are some arrhythmias which can have both micro as well as macro re-entry, for example, AV nodal re-entry tachycardia. As we already discussed, the uh, re-entry could have anatomical uh, tissue which is not conducting or functional tissue which is due to difference in electrophysical properties of surrounding tissues. So there is some <coughs> differences between the anatomical and functional re-entry. In anatomical re-entry, there is anatomical obstacles such as fibrosis and this Depending on the heterogeneity of electrophysical properties of cardiac, uh, cardiac muscle, dispersion of excitability, refractiveness, and anisotropic differences. We will talk about aniso, um, anisotropy in coming few slides. Discrete anatomical blocks create surrounding circular pathway, for example, typical atrial flutter. And here the functional uh, Re-entry could be very small, rapidly conducting. Tachycardia is initiated when depolarized wave splits into two limbs after going around the obstacle. This is typical, like the surface movement we have just discussed. Or circuit times and tachycardia rate depends on the refractive period. So the refractive period of different heterogeneous tissues surrounding each other are uh, they cause they depend on. The, they cause a difference in the circuit times and tachy, tachy rates and <coughs> refractiveness of the tissues. Tachycardia rates are determined by wavelength, conduction velocity into refractory period. So this, the wavelength will decide the tachycardia rate. Here the location and size vary. Examples of are AVRT, AVNRT, typical active factor, bundle branch, Tachycardia, PT around the infarcted scar. Here, examples are atypical atrial flutter, atrial fibrillation, VT in structurally normal heart. So, we will just have a glimpse of uh, what we can do to stop re entry because this is a big topic in itself. Just one slide. Use of drugs to accelerate conduction in the circuit. Suppose we have a slow pathway or a fast pathway. If you increase the conduction in one circuit, can stop the arrhythmia. Use of drug to prolong the recovery time. The slower circuit has a faster recovery. If we stop that or prolong that, we can stop re-entry. Or we can do overdrive pacing, we can entrain it, or we can give a DC shock, or we can do ablation of one limb. Either we ablate the fast limb or the slow limb, the re-entry could stop. Now there are certain different types of re-entry. Because heart tissue is not a very simple tissue, there are many complexities. 
So in short, we will just see uh, what are the different types. We are not going to very much detail. The most simple is the re-entry, is the surface re-entry. Like we have discussed before, there is a tissue which is not conducting, surrounded by a fast pathway and a slow pathway. And it is a unidirectional block, the current goes through the slow pathway, goes ahead and comes back. So this is the circus point we have already seen. This is the first type. Second is the leading circle type re -entry. In leading circle type, <coughs> there is a central core tissue which is permanent refractory and permanently refractory and all the depolarization is going from periphery to the center. Instead, the impulse propagates around functionally refractory core. So this core is refractory and among the neighboring fibers that have different electrophysiological properties. So all these neighboring fibers have a different electrophysiological property and they are continuously trying to send depolarization waves towards the core. Since the refractiveness of core is variable, the circuit size changes. This refractiveness of core may con continuously change and the circuit size continuously change. But it will form a circuit which is smallest but will be the smallest possible circuit that can continue to propagate. So this is the leading circuit type re-entry. Third is anisotropic re-entry. I had told you earlier that we will discuss about anisotropy. So what is anisotropy? Anisotropic re-entry is determined by the orientation of mitotic fibers in a manner in which these fibers and muscle bundles are connected to each other. So there are various fibers which can be parallel to each other or which can be perpendicular to each other. In general, electrical resistance between the cells is depending upon the fiber orientation. Whether the fibers are parallel to each other or they are shaped in a different array. Cell to cell communication is more rapid between the cells that are parallel to each other. Well, you can see the cells are parallel to each other, the impulse is faster at a much faster rate than when the impulse has to traverse the uh, pass through uh, the cells which are not parallel. This is isolated Lager drop perfuse murine heart showing different rates of electrical current passage. So this the blue rates are the fastest and the red are the slowest. Another type of re-entry could be figure of eight re-entry. Figure of eight re-entry consists of two counter rotating waveforms, one going clockwise, other going anti-clockwise. Right around the respective lines of block. So these are the respective line of block. This is going in this direction. This is going in this direction. And the waveform wavefront coalesce is in the lower part of the circuit, and they move at varying velocity across the common pathways. So they coalesce at the bases, and they move at a varying velocities. Again, you can see in this image, <coughs> the red one is the slowest, and the blue ones the fastest conduction. So this is figure of entry. Spiral re-entry. This occurs, the activation front has increasing curvature, that current is passing, depolarization current is passing, it has a activation front and a tail. So the activation front has increasing curvature from the periphery to the center. And at the tail, the curvature is so extreme that the activation front cannot propagate into the core. So this activation cannot propagate because it is the curvature is bringing it towards the tail. Note that the activation front meets the tail of refractiveness at the point. This is called as phase singularity. This is a phase map showing these different colors are meeting at this point. This is the phase singularity. And the bottom panel, this is Florence's amplitude map, again showing that the center depicted by blue has the slowest or the smallest potentials and the potential in the periphery are the largest. So this is in short what the spiral gradient. In a sense, active arrhythmia mechanisms, now we are combining the last three lectures, they could be due to abnormal impulse formation or re-entry mechanism. The abnormal impulse formation could be triggered activity, triggered activity could be early after depolarization or delayed after depolarization. The automaticity could be enhanced pacemaker, enhanced abnormal automaticity or enhanced normal automaticity or it could be a protected pacemaker like parasystole. The re-entrant could be reflection, surface movement or phase 2. 
Phase two reentry is specially seen in Brugada syndrome, so we are not discussing phase two right now. The surface movement reentry could be having some anatomical obstac obstacle or no anatomical obstacle, and anatomic functional block could be leading circle type, figure of eight type, or spiral waves. Lastly, we can have some differences in the uh, different type of mechanisms. For example, automaticity is if, if you see whether it can be initiated by a premature ectopic stimulus (PES). So, automaticity cannot be uh, is not initiated by it. trigger activity can be initiated by premature ectopic impulse. Reentry definitely is uh, initiated by premature ectopic termination. By a premature uh, impulse, this no, sometimes this yes. And uh, now the mechanism for terminating the entry is sending an ectopic impulse in the excitatory gap. First interval initiating at initiating, long warm up, short, and this is again long. Morphology of first beat identical to the subsequent beats, different than subsequent beat, and different from the subsequent beat. What happens after adenosine? Transient slowing or no response because the, this is automaticity is a continuous process. It can terminate a trigger activity and no response, or it can initiate an AV block. Catecholamines can increase automaticity, increase the delayed after repolarization, but not the early after repolarization. In fact, early after repolarization is suppressed by catecholamines and it can either increase or decrease the reentry. Response to Premature ectopic stimulus during tachycardia. It can reset or compensatory pause. It can reset or terminate, or it can reset or terminate. Reset with fusion? No, no. But here it can reset with a fusion wave. And response to continuous stimulation by tachycardia, overdrive suppression if enhanced normal automaticity, acceleration or termination, entrainment or termination. So this is the mechanism that is widely used for stimulation by tachycardia, by pacing and entrainment with fusion, no, no, here it can occur, entrainment with fusion. So this is about the mechanisms of arrhythmias. I know this has been exhaustive and probably many of um, you must be feeling that this is probably not required, but in 10% of arrhythmia, you require a working knowledge of this mechanism to help your diagnosis. So please bear with me. Thanks a lot for watching. Please share, like and subscribe.